presentations to start. The first one's gonna be by Councilman Pulley. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I'm, try that mic again. I'm not sure which button it is. Try now. Hello. There we go. I think this works. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we're here tonight to recognize the 2021 Hillsboro High School lacrosse team on their history making public school Division II state championship. And uh, so I'd like to uh, enlist the assistance of Council Lady Allen. Uh, who will help me read all of these amazing accomplishments by this team who is here with me. And I'd like to invite you all to come stand up with me as we read through all this stuff so everybody can see you. Council Lady Allen. His name is Kane. You ready? A resolution recognizing the 2020-2021 Hillsborough High School lacrosse team on their history-making public school Division II state championship. Whereas on May 14, 2021, the Hillsborough High School Burroughs lacrosse team clinched the school's first lacrosse state title with a 3-2 victory over the previously undefeated Cookville Cavaliers and whereas Hillsborough is the first MNPS public school Division II lacrosse team to win a state championship, and whereas this is Hillsborough High School's first state championship in any sport since 2009, and whereas the championship game was hosted by Nolansville High School and featured the largest group of fans since March 2020, which helped bolster the team with encouraging signs and constant cheering, and whereas the Burroughs overcame numerous obstacles in order to achieve this championship, and whereas due to the construction at Hillsborough High School, the team has not had a true practice field in three years and has been using the Woodmont Baptist Youth Soccer Field, which is a quarter the size of a regular cross field, and whereas over the course of the season, the team traveled to Alabama, Kentucky, East Tennessee, and Middle Tennessee to play their games and finish the season with a 15-3 record. And whereas the members of the championship team are Afton Verner, Caleb Kane, Peter Heilman, Wes Parker, James Thompson, Wesley Acton, Gavin Douglas, Sam Jackson, Rodney Glover, Jack Boyd, Griffin Flesher, Matt Clausen, Jack DeReesthal, Christopher Alba, Bryant Brown, Jaden Aquino, Cooper Sachs, Carter Geis, Gates Baxley, Ethan Reeves, Alex Henry, Caden White, Wolfie Scheltzig, Oliver Perry, Chet Wechter, Owen, uh, Owen Smith, and Devin Bester. And notice how I enlisted the smart one to recite all of those names. Whereas the head coach is Joe Van Antwerp and the assistant head coach is Tim Simich. And whereas building chemistry was one of te the team's biggest goals since the Burroughs roster draws from two other schools in addition to Hillsborough. That would be Martin Luther King School and Hume Fogg. And whereas six Burrow players will graduate this year, but the majority of the championship starting lineup will return and be the first team to use the new multi-use field atop Hillsborough's parking garage set to open in late 2021. And whereas it is fitting and proper that the Metro Council recognizes the Hillsborough High School of Trost team for their determination and congratulates them on their history-making state championship. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County that the Met Metropolitan Council hereby goes on record as recognizing the Hillsborough High School across boroughs on their public school Division II state championship. And here's the head coach for a few brief words. How's it going? First of all, thank you for uh, having us here. It's an honor to be here. Um, just really proud of this group right here. Um, like, like it said, we practice in a small little church field, so it's everything these guys did every single day, coming to practice and working hard and getting better every day. So, guys, good, good job this year. Let's run it back next year and have some fun, all right? Thank you very much. And then uh, we're going to have Council Member Suara for our next presentation. Go ahead, Council Member. Uh, 
and council member um, let's uh, uh, let's just wait a second and you can certainly invite the family to come up with you Go ahead. Hi. Thank you, Pro Tem. Um, as some of you may know, um, about a couple of weeks ago, we lost a pioneer in the Muslim community, Dr. A.K.M. Fakhruddin. Uh, he was instrumental in the establishment of the Islamic Center of Nashville and the Islamic School as well. But more than anything, uh, that center has become uh, an epitome center for building bridges within the Nashville community. Uh, some of you may have been there. The Islam 101 by Rashid is phenomenal. Uh, and there's always stuff about International uh, uh, Day and, and just meeting the community. For me, as a young mother moving to, to the city, uh, that place was a refuge for me in raising my children. Uh, it was a community for them, and we made lifelong friends there. And so uh, it is my honor to present this proclamation just to thank uh, the Fakhruddin family and to honor Dr. Fakhruddin legacy for all he has done, not just for the Muslim community, but for Nashville as a whole. And so, uh, ooh, going to. So the proclamation honoring Dr. A.K.M. Fakhruddin. Whereas Dr. Abdul Kasim Mohammed Fakhruddin was born in Bangladesh in 1936 and was one of eight siblings, and whereas Dr. Fakhruddin received his medical degree from Dhaka Medical College in 1959 and had the distinction of being one of only five students in the entire 120 person class who never failed an exam and Whereas in 1961, Dr. Fakhruddin received a Fulbright scholarship which brought him to America for a one-year internship at East Tennessee Baptist Hospital in Knoxville and... Whereas after completing his residency in 1967, Dr. Fakhruddin also received his board certification from the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology subsequently returning home to Pakistan, where there was a great need for trained psychiatrists. And whereas Dr. Fakhruddin made his way back to North America by way of Canada after the Pakistan Medical Association did not recognize his diploma from the United States and. Whereas in search of warmer weather, the doctor and his family moved to Nashville, Tennessee in 1970, where he joined Meharry Medical College as an associate professor of psychiatry and pharmacology, teaching there until 1979, and whereas the doctor was a devout Muslim who realized the great need for a mosque in Nashville so that fellow Muslims could have a dedicated space to gather for Juma and other religious activities and... Whereas in 1979, after a faithful meeting with English rock star Yusuf Islam, formerly Cat Stevens, Nashville's Muslim community bought a little house in 12th South to use as a mosque where Dr. Fakhrindin began serving as an inman. And whereas after 11 years under Dr. Fakhrindin's leadership, a new mosque was built where the house once stood and became known as the Islamic Center of Nashville. And Whereas Dr. Fakhruddin served as president of the Islamic Center of Nashville for 24 years, working to establish the ICN as a center of the Muslim community in Nashville. And whereas Dr. Fakhruddin created important partnerships with the city government, making the ICN a fixture in the community, all while envisioning bigger things to help serve the growing Muslim community, particularly education for Muslim children. And? Whereas Dr. Fakhruddin's vision became a reality in 1995 when the ICN bought 11 acres of land on Charlotte Pike to build a new mosque in his Islamic school, the Nashville International Academy. And whereas during his professional career, Dr. Fakhruddin became one of the most prominent psychiatrists in Nashville, serving several terms as the chairman of psychi uh, psychiatry at Tennessee Christian Medical Center and was awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Tennessee Association of International Physicians for outstanding services as a practitioner and educator and. 
Whereas in his space time, uh, Dr. Uh, Fakhreddin loved to barbecue, play tennis, and watch football as he was one of the Titans PSL founding members and Whereas he is survived by his wife, three children, and nine grandchildren, and whereas Dr. Fakhreddin's presence in the national community, as well as his quiet confidence and humor will be deeply missed by his family and friends now, therefore. We, the signatories, hereby be members of the Council of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, do hereby honor the life of Dr. A.K.M. Fakhruddin and recognize his immense contribution to the Muslim community and the city of Nashville. Signed, 15th of June, 2021. We're deeply honored to be uh, recognized. Um, I'm, I'm his uh, oldest son, Saeed, and everyone knows Rashad and Sabina. Um, I'm a physician here in uh, uh, Centennial Medical Center at the Frist Clinic, and I owe everything to my father, my love of the Tennessee Titans, uh, my love of uh, medicine, my love for the city, watching the city develop. Uh, uh, I, I can truly say I'm a Nashvilleian since I've been here for 50 years. Um, and my sister was born here, and um, he, I, I miss him every second of every day. And I'm, I'm deeply indebted to the city council for uh, bestowing this honor on my dad. Thank you so much. Thanks very much to all of you for coming today. Um, all right, um, we're gonna move to announcements next, and um, I'm actually not sure whether everybody's machines are working. <laughs> so somebody can attempt to say they wanna speak. I'll see whether I see it up here. All right, um, Council Member Bradford. Thank you, Pro Tem. Um, I just want one brief announcement. Um, as everyone knows, we are approaching the third Saturday of June, which means it is coffee with your councilman time in District 13. So we will be uh, meeting at the Dunkin' Donuts location on Briley Parkway from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. If anybody would wish to uh, pre-schedule their time, they can send me an email and let me know what time they would like to uh, show up. Thank you, Council Member. Um, and everybody else, I, I apparently haven't been trained up on how to see if you want to speak. So if you want to speak, just uh, raise your hand, please. Council Member Welsh. Thank you, Pro Tem. Um, I would just like to announce that this Saturday, um, June 19th at 9.30, there will be a community meeting in District 16 to talk about a proposed redevelopment at Hartford and East Thompson Lane. Uh, the developer will be there to talk about their vision for the area and get here any community concerns um, so that we can move forward or not based on the, the wants and needs of the district. So please join us at Coleman Park Community Center at 9.30 this Saturday, June 19th and let us hear your voice. Thank you. Thanks, Council Member. Council Member Evans. Uh, thank you, Pro Tem. Um, this Saturday from nine to 10, I'm having a rezoning proposal meeting about 3216 Earhart Road. Uh, we are meeting at the Bridgewater neighborhood pool picnic area. Please bring your own chair. Seating is limited. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Withers. Thank you, Mr. Pro Tem. Um, I'm having a community meeting this coming Thursday, not this week, Thursday the 24th at 6 p.m. at East Park Community Center um, regarding the rezoning proposal for 943 to 47 Woodland Street. We uh, did have an Edgefield community meeting virtually on that a little while back and had a planning commission hearing. 
just wanted to get an additional opportunity for community members to provide feedback before it comes for council. So that's for the 943 to 47 Woodland Street rezoning proposal, and it will be on Thursday the 24th at 6 p.m. at East Park Community Center. Thank you. Thanks, Council Member. Anybody else? Councilmember Taylor, go ahead. Thank you. I would like to announce that there is, on this Saturday, there's going to be several Juneteenth celebrations. We may announce that already if I, if I was out of the room. Uh, but specifically, one is going to be Friday, June 18th uh, at Elizabeth Park in District 21. We're going to kick off uh, the Juneteenth weekend with Nashville Soccer Club. Yes, the pun is intended kickoff. We're going to do a watch party uh, at Elizabeth Park for the soccer game uh, with the newest uh, group, the soccer supporter group, the mixtape. And also on June 19th in District 21, we're going to have a Black on Buchanan Juneteenth Festival from noon to 5 p.m. And uh, we're asking you to come out and celebrate Freedom Day with us. Um, yes. Come again? Oh, I don't know. But there's going to be food, so bring a plate and foil for a to-go plate if you, if you want one. Um, but also, just to, to let everyone know, on Saturday, June 19th, uh, we're going to be celebrating 156 years of freedom and emancipation for African Americans in the United States. Uh, and so we're excited to celebrate. There's over 20 uh, events going on in the city this year. Uh, so come out and find one. There's going to be one in your neighborhood somewhere. Thanks. Thanks, Councilmember. Councilmember Porterfield. Thank you, Pratim. To uh, piggyback off of my colleagues, we are having a Juneteenth community event at District 29, and that is the It Takes a Village Juneteenth community event, June 19th at uh, 2 p.m. from 2 to 6. There will be games, bounce houses, water slides, free food and drinks for the kids. There will also be vendors. This will be located at 2510 Murfreesboro Pike. Um, so there's a new owner at that business and they're wanting to give back to the community. So everyone is welcome to celebrate that Juneteenth event. Also, we have started our weekly litter walks. So if anyone in District 29 wants to come on out and pick up trash, we are meeting every single week. Please make sure that you sign up so that we can let you know if there's a weather cancellation. cancellation. The link to sign up is um, tinyurl.com slash D29 litter walks. That's tinyurl.com slash D29 litter walks. And again, we are doing those every single Saturday morning, weather permitting. Please sign up in advance. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Council Member O'Connell, next. Thank you, Mr. Pertem. Uh, just a couple things I wanted to mention. Uh, one, I wanted to appreciate Councilmember Hurt and the Jefferson Street United Merchants Partnership for hosting this Thursday, uh, June 17th at 6 p.m., an event at Cossie Gardner Park that will be focused on the Jefferson Street CAP project that has been proposed. There will be a great panel uh, for that for a discussion there uh, with featuring Dr. Learotha Williams from TSU, Dan Lane, Tiffany Capehart, and Carlina Rollins, all of whom uh, have been important stakeholders and parts of community conversations uh, along that corridor. So please do come out to that again. That is Thursday, June 17th at 6 p.m. at Cossey Gardner Park right there uh, on Jefferson Street. So I wanted to advise people of that important community conversation and panel discussion. Um, also wanted to mention uh, we are hovering right underneath the 50% rate for COVID vaccine, vaccine distribution in uh, Nashville and Davidson County. And I want to advise people of continuing to find up-to-date vaccine information at covid19.nashville.gov. Um, there is currently, if you go to that main page and you go over to the right-hand side, you will see a shots on goal COVID-19 vaccine information. There is currently a free coupon booklet uh, opportunity out there with $100 in value when you receive your first shot at one of five Metro vaccination pop-ups in June. There are a bunch of great participating partners in there. Those pop-up locations are going on. Um, all throughout the month, all the way through July. So check those out. There's one at 
Von Elrod's before the Nashville Sound. Oh, that, sorry, that one already passed. There's one at Plaza Mari Mariachi Saturday, June 19th, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Sunday, June 20th at Tennessee Brew Works, noon to 5 p.m. But check these out. There are going to be several pop-up locations. You can go get that booklet. It's a great opportunity to get vaccinated and continue us on the recovery to something we recognize as normal. So thank you, Mr. Pro Tem. Thanks, Council Member. And Council Member Vircher is up next. Thank you, Mr. Speaker Pro Tem. Um, just have some community announcements for, for District 28 and, and Southeast Davison where uh, we have great things always happening. Uh, it's a great place to work, live, and play. On June 18th, uh, we have an outside cinema uh, hosted by um, our Mill Creek Friends of Mill Creek at Sunset. That address is 12965 Old Hickory Boulevard. Many may know that it's uh, uh, within close proximity to Cane Ridge High School. That is um, our 600-acre Mill Creek Park um, that's currently coming online. We would have our outside cinema June 18th at sunset. Also, June 26th, um, District 28, we will have our pop-up and pop-in community meeting. So because we, we average over 250 neighbors per meeting, that's just too many people for, for our facilities, and we're still trying to be cognizant and make sure uh, we're, we're, we're practicing safe precautions as it relates to COVID. So we're going to do a pop-up, pop-in meeting. This is um, an outdoor community meeting. This will be at Una Baptist Church on uh, Murfreesboro Pike. That address is 1931 uh, Murfreesboro Pike. Uh, we will have, uh, as always, the District 28 staples. Just going to be a little different. We're not going to have the catered buffet that we typically have for all of our community meetings, but we will have uh, grab-and-go snacks for you. At this meeting, you'll just come in, you'll pop in, uh, we'll have a dialogue. We're going to have uh, developers there where you can ask questions as it relates to future proposals. Um, also, we're going to provide an update on the Southeast Safety Campus. I know many of you have been hearing about the Southeast Precinct, and what's get mi what gets missed is that it's a Southeast Safety Campus. So you we'll give you an update on the Precinct and also the ECC Center and also uh, the Fuel Fleet uh, Center as well. That meeting is June 26th from 10 a.m. to noon. You can stop in at any time during, during that window. And please, although that is still um, an outdoor event, I'm still wanting you to, to wear your mask because you're going to be interacting uh, with other neighbors and uh, with other community stakeholders as well. Lastly, uh, speaker, um, any neighborhood concerns, I want you to still contact uh, the hub, hub.nashville.gov. That aids us uh, in, in the agencies that service our district to be able to um, properly plan as it relates for, for resources for various calls. I know many of you um, have also indicated that sometimes you don't trust that reporting, that online reporting. However, you can still call 311. So again, for any community concerns, uh, litter on roadways, um, stop signs down, or, or potholes, please utilize the hub or call uh, 311. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thanks very much. Any other council member? We're about out of time. We, we, we'll have one more. Council member Gamble. Thank you, Mr. Pro Tem. I'd just like to announce that the Brothers Roundtable is hosting a Juneteenth community celebration in District 3 at the Parkwood Community Center. There will be food, music, fun, and games. The Parkwood Center is located at 3220 Bellevue Drive, and all are welcome. It is a free event. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so that's going to wrap up the announcements, and um, we're going to find out whether I can figure out what button to press for Mr. Nolan's microphone. <laughs>